Hello again. Um, so I saw this post on Reddit um, with this picture that you can see now. And the question that this person asked is, my ants aren't eating their protein, what do I do? Am I doing something wrong? So what I thought I'd do is I would do a guide to understanding your ants so that you should be able to easily answer that question that they posed. Now, obviously, I, I don't wish to pick on that particular poster, and you know, I hope they get an answer to their question. But it is a common question that I see a lot, and the answer to it is all about understanding and reading your ants. So we've talked about the, the stages that they go through, um, and I thought I'd just do that again, how each stage matters and how it matters to what the colony wants and how the colony is feeling and, and what interactions they will have. Um, so yeah, you're looking here at a, the, the egg pile of my main colony, and what I say, or the way to think about it, is three weeks as eggs, two weeks as larvae and three weeks as pupa and then they'll close, hatch out. And that is being slightly negative, they'll probably go a bit quicker than that, especially if it's warm and they've got a lot of workers, but it's a good way to always think about where various stages will be in the future. So this pile of eggs that I'm looking at here, middle of or late middle of August, middle of September, middle of October, they're going to be closing just before hibernation. So realistically this little pile of eggs here is going to be the last ants that I get out this year. Um, and I'm actually noticing that they are slowing down um, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, tracking the brood through the various stages is very important. So um, I know, obviously, that a lot of people are ahead of me now because of the little disaster I've had, so that's why I'm doing this video, because I'm worried that you will get to the certain stages before me now. So this is stage two. This is where they go after um, eggs. This is larvae, and as I've said before, they look like these little bumpy white worms, and as you can see some of them moving, they are actually... Um, able to move there. I know it's all alive, the eggs are alive, but these are actually, um, you know, beings that can move and do things and interact. Um, and as I said before, you can see how well fed they are from the, the splodge in the middle. That is the food that they've eaten, that brown colour. That is the insects that they've digested. And this larvae, this is where the protein is going mostly in your colony. The Adult worker ants need the tiniest of tiny amounts just for cell regeneration and the queen needs a very small amount to be able to lay more eggs but the vast majority of protein goes into the larvae and therefore knowing or, or checking how many larvae you've got at any moment in time is a very good indication about how much protein your colony needs at that moment in time. and. They, they will do two things to feed the larvae. They will actually bring solid bits of protein back and balance it on top of larvae piles. So you will see bits of dead insect, and I think I get a few shots here with some dead insect being moved around on top of the larvae pile. But equally, the workers themselves will, will bite off small little tiny chunks and bring little tiny flecks back. So sometimes you'll see little flakes, little black flakes that they're feeding to an individual larvae. And also the workers will, will suck any liquid protein and they will carry that back and then regurgitate it to the larvae through tropolaxis. So they've got multiple different ways of getting that protein into the larvae and you just need to be aware and you can sometimes see like how well fed they are because you can see that there's a bit now being moved about. You can see these bits and you know if there's bits in there being moved about they don't currently need any more. Um, and then the third stage they'll be larvae for about two weeks and they do get bigger you can see these ones in the corner are slightly larger than the uh, first ones I showed you. But then, yes, the third stage is pupa, and this is pupa. Um, and they'll be about three weeks as pupa. And again, these age over time. 
they start off as very fluffy and white and they go more sort of browny yellow and more of this sort of paper-like consistency over the course of about three weeks heat dependent and then after that you will get callow workers so as I said looking at your brood knowing where your ants are planning to be as well because you can see how many pupa they've got so you know that within three weeks all of this pupa I can see here will be worker ants and therefore they'll be that much bigger um, I can see how much larvae they've got and therefore how much food they need in terms of protein at the moment I can see how many eggs they've got I can see that there are actually I think at the moment less eggs than there are pupa so I know that the colony is in slowdown mode at the moment towards hibernation which I'll talk about in a second and I'm able to read my colony and see where it's at at various stages of brood and therefore what it wants and um, what what it requires yeah what it requires um, so then that should answer the question from that very first picture that I showed you where I don't see any larvae in that picture and the second thing as I said in a couple of videos ago mentally imagine all of the capacity of your ants how much gaster space you've got how many larvae you've got and think well how much could they eat and then again look at that picture at the start to a huge great mealworm that's that's bigger in volume than the entire colony that they fed it to and then they're wondering why they haven't eaten that huge great mealworm how how are they going to eat it where is it going to go it can't go into that f small amount of ants and there are no larvae demanding um, the mealworm so they're not actually doing anything wrong but it's just those ants don't want that mealworm at this current stage in their development um, the question they really should be asking is why is the queen not laying eggs and where are the larvae in the pupa um, but that's a separate question the, the question on feeding is very easy to answer and the other thing is they're probably picking at that mealworm they're probably tearing a few small bits off and if there are a few larvae in there hidden behind the queen or something they are probably feeding that small larvae it's just it's such a massive overfeed that you're not going to see a, 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 a reduction in the amount of food that's in there before it starts to go mouldy you have to take it out before they'll actually eat that and that's why to that person it appears their ants aren't eating um, and then after the pupa stage comes callows, as I've said before. Now this is newly hatched out ants, and, and here there's actually two of them, both of them not moving. There's the very, very sort of see-through, very pale one at the back, and then just in front of that, sat on the edge of the pupa, there's a slightly darker callow, but you can see it's still lighter than the other ants. Now, the one in the foreground's probably about two days old, and the one in the background was probably close to day and then here tending to the eggs again you can see there's two in there that are still sort of grey you can see their eye that's the main indication that they're still a colour it was when you can still see their eye in their head but they're darker again these are probably three days old they're, you won't be able to distinguish them tomorrow from a normal ant so when you've got your starting colony you can actually count callows and see how many new ants you've got if you check them on a daily basis and then the other food that an ant colony needs is sugar. Um, now they do feed sugar to the larvae, but the workers need it for energy. And what I'm showing you here is just a sort of an overview of my colony. And I've shown you before how their gasters expand as they drink, as they drink more sugar. And I look at this my colony here, and they are stuffed. You know, every single, or practically every single ant you can see working in there has got a really extended gaster with the stripes showing, um, and they're all absolutely stuffed to capacity. Now, if I put sugar in the outworld, they will go at it anyway because they're greedy, Lacey and Niger, they never say no practically to food and they stuff themselves absolutely and I'm sure there's a few more ants somewhere in there they could stuff up a little bit more. Plus there's new callows being born and I actually saw a callow um, 
near the back that was already stuffed up with sugar. So they're feeding sugar into the new callows as soon as um, they're getting access to it. But I know that they're not hungry for sugar. I could not feed them for a week and they'd be fine, you know. I can see that by looking at my colony and understanding it, understanding its needs and where it's at, like I said, and what its requirements are. Now, your colony is very clever. Um, they know lots of things. They know the time of year. They even, we think, us keepers, that they can tell whether it's a good or a bad day outside, even though they're kept inside. They seem to be conscious of air pressure and temperature drops and light reductions. And here's the next thing. You are going to have to hibernate your Laceous Niger. I'll to talk about hibernation in another video, but you are going to have to hibernate them over winter. And if you don't, um, you will have problems. It's all about observing your ants. They will go into hibernation anyway, even if you try to keep them warm. They will stop laying eggs, they will stop doing anything, they will cluster together. And in the spring, there's always a lot of posts from ant keepers who didn't hibernate their ants where they won't come out of hibernation. They get stuck in that cluster together don't lay eggs phase because it never gets cold. So you're going to have to find a place where you can keep your ants uh, about between 5 and 10 degrees for at least 90 days or preferably slightly longer. I normally hibernate mine for November, December, January and most of February. And um, I have actually got a mini fridge um, which is separate to our main fridge and I put a thermometer in there and it mostly stays around 8 degrees which is absolutely perfect for ant hibernation temperature. But if you've got an outhouse or a garage or a loft or something like that, you could hibernate them in that. Um, this is my mini fridge. Now if you are going to put them in a fridge, you have to be careful that they don't touch the back plate. Um, as you can see, there's a, a big block of ice on the back plate there because back plates can freeze. Um, and you have to make sure that they don't freeze. If they freeze, you'll kill them. So 8 degrees, but not freezing. Um, if you haven't got a mini fridge and you're able to use it and they're still only in the test tube because it's the first year and this is why I'm encouraging you to keep them in the test tube this year to make it easier to hibernate them you can um, use the salad drawer of a normal fridge the salad drawer is designed to stay slightly warmer than the rest of the fridge and that's a good place to put them or like I said outside in the loft in the garage but as long as they don't freeze um, so that's just a video of me talking about my ants, talking about understanding ants, talking about where they're at in their development and just sort of knowing your colony. And if you know and understand your ant colony, then you know why they are or are not eating or demanding food or going sleepy or everything about your colony. You can see for yourself if you understand them. Thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.